Today we are going to talk about the dynamic interplay between technology, innovation, uh, and how the human element can help organizations overcome uh, obstacles that technology innovation might uh, pose to them. To start our conversation today, I'd like to ask you about the past few years uh, evolving emerging technologies. Which are the ones that you uh, make you most excited about? I mean, there's so many new technologies coming through. Uh, if you just take it at the highest level, you've got things like frictionless payments, the trend towards being able to pay things so quickly um, uh, without any friction. Uh, in the retail space, you know, walk in, pick something out, walk out, it all happens automatically. In the taking a taxi somewhere, similar sort of process, get in, get out, all the payments are sorted out uh, behind the scenes for you. So that's, that's a big technology trend that, that's uh, going through. Um, you've got um, the whole extended reality space. Um, perhaps that's been on the back burner for the last year or so, but uh, a space that's been really gathering momentum. And we see that coming back as, as some of the new devices and technologies come through that will uh, facilitate that moving forward again. Um, and before I steal them all, Matt. <laughs> I guess I should say the word AI. Yes, definitely. <laughs> I think one of the things about AI is the fact that uh, it's something that we as a business have been involved with for a number of years, uh, but clearly over the last 12 months from the time that uh, ChatGPT really first hit people's consciousness, it's definitely been uh, front and center of a lot of the conversations that we've been having. Um, and not just with our customers, but with our staff, uh, with investors, you know, our families. I think everybody's been asking the question is, what is this technology and what impact is it going to have on us? But exciting times. Yeah, and, and obviously there are different areas of AI. There's the uh, generative AI, the chat GPT stuff that you were just talking about, but also you've got autonomous vehicles. Uh, that's all AI driven. That will be massively transformative on society uh, as it comes through. It's a very exciting area. So speaking of some, some of the examples, can you tell me a little bit about some exciting use cases that we've seen? I think synthetics data, which is uh, an important part when it comes to AI technology, is something where I think we're really beginning to see what the potential are. Um, now to understand what synthetics uh, is, uh, think about a use case where you want to train a artificial intelligence model to say, recognize someone wearing uh, a face mask. Um, but actually to train a, uh, an AI model, you've got to go ahead and have lots of images with people wearing a face mask, not wearing a face mask. Um, what you're able to do with synthetics technology is to generate data sets that can then be used as an aid in training. Um, so I think we're having quite a few exciting conversations in the healthcare industry and elsewhere around how can we use that synthetics data uh, and that approach to generating synthetic uh, data sets. I mean, one that I'd like to draw out, it's a, bit, it's a bit sort of back office, but actually facilitates a lot, is, uh, is APIs. Um, and, you know, what that enables is one industry to effectively plug into another industry and completely transform uh, the user journey. I think and, uh, John raises an interesting point, which is we've been involved in writing these systems for our clients for a number of years. So what seems exciting to the general marketplace may be actually something that we've been doing for a number of years. And therefore, uh, yeah, it's good to hear that it's now coming together in a way that really provides that seamless human experience. So maybe we can talk a little bit about the market sentiment today. Um, a recent uh, report that we published about technology acceleration, uh, where we surveyed 1,000 businesses across North America and Western Europe, 81% uh, of those businesses that we surveyed had a very positive approach or sentiment about the market and where we are going. Um, what, what, what are your thoughts on that? What do you see on the market? Technology is fast evolving, innovation is ripe. Um, are businesses looking at that as an opportunity or rather as a challenge? I, I'd say they're definitely looking at it as an opportunity. Um, the, as in, as I was giving an example with the scooter, there's quite transformative uh, solutions available if you engage uh, well with digital technologies. Um, the challenge element of it is that a lot of these programs are not succeeding. Maybe 50% of 
uh, according to the research that we did and not actually delivering the outcomes that they set out to, deli uh, to go for. Um, and, you know, so part of the challenge for organizations is how do they set themselves up better for success. And we dug into that a little bit into the report. I'm sure we'll get into that as we go. Yeah, well, certainly one uh, out of four business leaders are rather concerned about the fast pace of technology and uh, they, they feel challenged by it. So, Matt, what do you think businesses can do today to be ready to reap the, the, the opportunity with technology innovation. Yeah, I mean, I think if we go back a couple of years when we were at the height of the pandemic, there was a lot about kind of like digital necessity and what were the breaks that existed in people's experiences with technology. And, you know, there are many anecdotes about, you know, uh, what happened when people were no longer in call centers answering phone calls or in an office able to do a manual process. I think we're very much out the other side of there and now people really are beginning to look at what's the opportunity. So you talk about the confidence that the market has in terms of uh, where are we going to go next. I think what people are now trying to do is really look at it from a transformative perspective. So as John said earlier, let's take some of that technology that's uh, been put in place, building blocks, APIs, you know, cloud technology. Now let's embrace new ways of interacting with humans put humans at the center of what we're going to do in terms of delivering for our clients and then seeing where people go. So I see that kind of uh, kind of optimism in terms of where can we go next as being a driver for our clients. In a recent IDC research commissioned by Endava, the overarching majority of respondents said that over half of the digital transformation projects in the past 12 months didn't reach their uh, expected goals and outcome. The key to success, uh, according to most respondents, was involving people into uh, the product development, into the whole digital transformation project, and on the other hand, uh, lack of uh, involvement in these projects uh, can lead to unsuccessful projects. Have you seen uh, that um, tendency? You're getting into a space that we're really, really passionate about here in Andava. Um, you know, that getting the right balance between uh, what you can do with technology uh, and how you do it so that it actually engages people uh, at many stages, but you know, number one from the point of view, what's it going to feel like when you use it? Are you going to trust it? Uh, number two, actually engaging the people on the project um, with the excitement of it, uh, engaging your organization because it inevitably involves change. Um, and if you don't do it right, people have a tendency to resist change. Um, so there's a number of dimensions where you really need a people centricity uh, around how you go about it, how you think about it, um, in order to make that technology successful. Um, and that's, you know, that's where Indava has positioned itself uh, fair and square uh, since we set the business up. Um, it, was, it was all about how you build that design element in, that creative element, as well as the engineering element uh, into the way in which you deliver um, so that you end up with people at the heart of, of what you're doing. I think as well that the um, when we take that approach of considering humans at the center of the products that we're delivering for our clients, there's also the notion of adaptability that you have to consider. So when people talk about digital transformations that fail, it's usually because what people have not done is take feedback from going through the process and actually refining either the solutions or the outcomes that they're trying to deliver for people. Um, and clearly, um, at the core of everything we do, we have a very agile approach. Um, our core values are very much about our adaptability and our openness to change. And taking journey, uh, journeys with our clients and, and demonstrating to them that that's a good way of approaching digital transformation is a really good way of doing things. John, what's your view uh, on the role of company culture uh, can have in embracing technology? How can we foster a company culture that can help organizations thrive in today's digital era? So I, th I think we've touched on a number of aspects of uh, successful generation of digital product. Um, that's all about um, collaboration. So you need multidisciplinary capabilities um, we think of that as design, creativity, 
uh, the, the engineering and technology capabilities, the quality um, dimensions, all of those have to uh, work closely together. So, you know, the culture that you uh, establish as a business is fundamental to successful collaboration across those disciplines. You know, they'll, they're not disciplines that naturally collaborate. Um, and many, many organizations have struggled to make that multidisciplinary approach work, um, uh, largely because uh, of not having a um, highly collaborative culture. And wh why would that be? Um, some of it can be because of a, a functional or departmental type mindset. So you have a, a department of designers, a department of creatives, uh, department of engineers, department of um, testers or QA. Um, that's not conducive to um, development of digital product um, because it, it creates an arm's length culture rather than a hugely multidisciplinary uh, mindset and approach. So that's, that's the number one uh, aspect around culture. Um, I think the second thing is that, um, and, and you know, this is something we've been focusing on for all the years that we're in business, is uh, what are the sorts of behaviors that you want to encourage? Um, and we think of that in terms of openness. So you know, if there's a problem, you don't hide it away. It's actually there for the whole team to see and wrestle through. Um, or, or for us, visible to the client, so that together we wrestle through it. Um, it's about uh, thoughtfulness, you know, having that mindset about how do we make a positive impact with this product we're creating? How do we make it exciting for the user? Um, how do we make it something that's going to be transformative in the world? Um, and a culture of, of being adaptable uh, and actually being open to change and accepting change. All of those things help uh, facilitate the creation of a digital product. And if we move outside of an organization, how does it uh, look like in the ecosystem? Can trusted technology partnerships help the success of these digital transformation projects? Yeah, I think so. So, I mean, let me give some examples of where things can go wrong. <laughs> um, you know, so if you take one from the last 10 years or so, um, in the frictionless payment space, uh, when they introduced contactless payments uh, in the US, i.e., you know, you can take your card and tap on the um, device, we're all used to it now. But when they brought that in in the US, um, it was initially rejected by the public because they didn't trust that, um, that payments couldn't be stolen from them by someone, I don't know, tapping their pocket with a, um, with a wand um, that then took money from their uh, card. Um, and so they hadn't thought through how you build the trust in the consumer as part of the rollout, as part of, you know, whether that's the, the marketing and communication, but also the way the technology actually worked um, that then would enable people to trust it. As a result of which, when they received their cards through their post, they, if it was a contactless one, they chopped it up and asked for one that wasn't contactless. Um, and that put the whole system back about 10 years in the US um, because you know having generated that mistrust you then had to allow some time to go by before you could actually uh, push the technology again so you know as a historic example of what what can happen if you get it wrong and why it's so important to put the the human the person who's going to use the system uh, at the heart of your thinking uh, if you look if you look forward you know, one of the very exciting technologies that's, that's coming through is, is autonomous vehicles, particularly driverless cars. You know, it's very visible today that the average consumer is not that confident about the idea of autonomous vehicles on their roads. So we know that has to be addressed as part of rolling it out. Um, I'm not sure it is being addressed. Now, organizations who are um, addressing those sorts of challenges um, have probably not um, been stepping outside of their space. They've operated within one industry. Uh, engaging organization like Indava can actually bring different perspectives and different experiences into that project uh, and help you get that human dimension into the way in which you do your design and so on. 
Um, we're also, as I mentioned earlier, we're set up that way. So we have these multidisciplinary teams where the designers and the creatives are used to working with engineers and wrestling through these things. Um, and, it, and it hasn't got uh, separated, which it is in, in so many organizations. Yeah, I, I think we're going to see this quite a bit um, in the next couple of years, which is around establishing that trust in the technology that's being deployed to solve a problem. Um, in a recent conversation in the healthcare space, we were uh, talking about the fact that you know AI models may be a better predictor of someone's health over a longer period of time. However, the trust is still with a human in terms of a doctor telling them what is or isn't a potential future ailment for them. And using the example that John gave, I mean, if people won't trust a contactless uh, card transaction, which is fully encrypted, secure, you know, only capable over a short period of time, how do you start describing systems which will use a technology in a way that people feel comfortable in uh, in terms of using it? And the only way you're really going to do that is by pay, uh, placing humans at the centre of everything that you do. And then if we're talking about cent uh, humans at the centre of everything, customers should be at the centre of every digital technology project as well. Do you have an example where you've seen the opposite, where the customer was not put at the center of a digital transformation project and that uh, led to the unsuccessful uh, deployment of that technology? I mean, we haven't got any examples <laughs> of that. Or not that I can no, Not that I'm aware of. We're all consumers of lots of different systems and lots of different digital transformations. Um, I have my own personal bugbear around uh, working with airlines. Some airlines have a very uh, seamless experience and place their customers very uh, much at the center of everything that they do. Um, and some of those airlines are customers of Indava. Others are less focused on the customer, it seems. And every time you go and have an interaction inside of an application or on a website, you know, the user journey has changed. You can't find yourself, uh, uh, you can't find the information you need or the, the contact someone is buried away somewhere deep inside of it. And when you look at that, you've got to think, well, you're clearly trying to evolve and to go on a journey, but it doesn't seem that myself as a customer in that experience is being considered a great deal. I actually had a personal example yesterday, actually. Uh, not of an airline, but I was getting a, um, or being told there was a delivery coming to me. Um, and everything seemed to have been set up well, so you could actually click on it. You could see where the driver was, told you how many stops away he was, and what the approximate time it was that he was going to arrive. Um, but he didn't show up. And, and that actually what happened was you could see the driver had gone past, and he was slowly getting further and further away. Um, and then the system reported that he'd failed, he tried to deliver and failed, right? Well, I was sitting at home. I knew that wasn't what happened. So um, there, was a, there was a point in their process where it actually broke down, um, where they essentially had allowed the driver to, pretended to have delivered, um, but actually all that happened was he drove past. It's all right, you can bring in my birthday present next week. <laughs> Is it your birthday, Matt? No. <laughs> a successful project where we could see that the customer was really at the center of uh, the product development, the whole uh, project, um, and therefore it was a successful outcome. So we, we're working with one of the largest payments organizations in the world, um, uh, whose one of their big desires is to get to the unbanked. Um, now we don't have that many unbanked in the Western world, but there are many parts of the world where uh, there's a lot of people who uh, don't have the, the cash flows and uh, uh, the income uh, to get a bank account. So how, how do you um, get to them? And essentially, by getting to them, they get financial inclusion. Um, and one of the answers is, is through uh, the availability of uh, online wallets. And so um, we've been able to help that client put uh, an online wallet availability, actually at a sort of national infrastructure level for a number of countries. Um, and that has hugely opened up the number of unbanked people who actually now have financial inclusion because essentially they have a balance um, that they carry in their wallet and they can use that um, as electronic uh, credits within the, within the uh, system and the country that they operate in. Um, and actually hugely satisfying um, to see that impact as well.
I'm thinking about some of the things that started off as kind of accidental transformations during the pandemic. Um, we saw, uh, we were working in the mixed reality space uh, pre-pandemic and uh, a number of our clients were very much wanting to know how they could use that technology um, as a way of reaching their clients during the pandemic. But post-pandemic, they saw it as an opportunity to really differentiate an experience. Um, and within Indava, we've won awards for our um, mixed reality capability as it relates to uh, museum experiences um, and other mixed reality experiences. And I think um, in those circumstances, it really is about how we were able to look at a new technology, help people explain how it could uh, improve the interactions that they have with their customers um, and really make a difference. So if, uh, if I would ask you for one key takeaway um, around digital transformation projects or the interplay between technology, innovation and the, the human-centric uh, approach, what would be your key takeaway for businesses? Uh, what can be a key to success uh, in the future? So, I mean, for me, it's always been put people at the heart of it. Design for people get people involved all the way through the process, um, get your wider organization uh, engaged in the change that you're gonna have to go through. So that's people issue again. So, you know, it's that people centricity which um, can make the technology hugely successful out there. And of course, when you get a product out there that's hugely successful, it just goes, it runs and, and, and drives revenue and huge success for your organization. It's about listening to that feedback. So as John said, if you've put a product into the marketplace and you're getting good feedback from it, then listen to what your customers are saying and help it direct you where you go next. Don't go into it with a closed mindset of, I know what the best answer can possibly be. So for me, it's, it's taking those two elements around the human centeredness as well as the feedback from the process and going on that journey. That's the most value that a business can get. Mm -hmm.